Whatever happens in the future is pretty much a mystery. I'm not disappointed at all in the condition that we're in. Uh, probably pretty typical uh, for most teams uh, would, would be in a very similar situation. Uh, I can tell you this, that the guys that need improvement, um, we won't let them down. And then you got to end the break. The guy wants to smash, you got a chance to play. How much toughness do we have? Are we soft? Do we have a bunch of soft guys? Or do we have enough tough guys who develop that personality in your team? Because you, you, when I say tough, I'm talking about you know going to Auburn and playing, going on the road in this league and playing, whether it's Florida, wherever it is. Complacency, arrogance, uh, not remembering the things that made you successful to start with, and knowing the fact that uh, all the other people that don't have what you have want to get it. Tackle the guy chest to chest in the open field. If we're going to have a good program, we need to be on TV. Uh, and the opportunity for us to be on TV is a positive for the program. So rather than complaining about it, we ought to turn it into a positive for ourselves and enjoy the day game and, you know, get a little suntan or something. Right, go. Come on, guys, let's go. Let's have a party. Let's go. 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 Bust the ball. Go through the ball. With our freshmen, uh, none of them can fail, and what we tell them is uh, the only thing that you can fail at is if you don't give your best effort to do the best you possibly can uh, and to improve from where you are. Blueberry, you didn't drop your show. Blueberry is at least 15 yards down the field. Good. Good. All right. On your, I'm going to say set, right, and then I want you to go when you're ready to go so the guy has to go on movement. You got the best jam on him, but you still did this with your feet and had to pivot, and that's how he almost got on top of it. I won't put him in this situation. I won't put him in this situation. It's hard to get out of We're going to do what we need to do to win the game. There's not any particular style that we're going to play. Uh, we're going to make the decisions that give us the best chance to win. This is two years in a row that we beat these guys, but we, we won the game, but we didn't really defeat the team. All right, we didn't knock the snot out of them for 60 minutes like we're supposed to. All right, we didn't make the plays in the game like we're supposed to to, to win the game. All right, so if you want to get happy about the results, I'm happy about the results. If you want to be happy about the process, I'm not. All right, and if we're going to do what we need to do as a football team to be as good as I want to be and as we want to be, then that process is not good enough. All right, so, and, and, if, you, and if you think because you won, you don't have to change, you got another thing coming. Well, I always go to church before the game, so I'm going to get a double header this weekend. When we play on Saturday, I go to church before the game, and then I go again on Sunday. So, I only, you know, going before the game is going to kill two birds with one stone this time. We're riding back to Roanoke on the bus. My mother-in-law's been in the hospital, so I thought I'd give her a call to see how she was doing. And the first thing she said to me, nothing about the game, nothing. She says, if you don't start wearing a hat, you're going to get skin cancer. And I said, Linda, if we don't start playing better, I'm going to get shot.
I, I don't see that like a lot of people do that always look out here to figure out what's going to happen. Well, since he's not there, that ought to be good. I don't have, that doesn't mean anything. And never had a guy that's a starter on a team that's having success, uh, that's been a successful player that ever quit the team in the middle of the season. So you figure it out. And um, we're going to support the guy every way we can, help him every way we can. Um, but obviously he's missed now three days of practice, and I haven't talked to him, so I'm assuming that he's quit the team. So we've got a lot of good football players on this team, and I'm here to tell you it's time to move on. All right, it's time to move on. You got it? It's time to move on. I ain't asking any more questions about it. Guy doesn't come to practice three days. I got nothing else to say about it. We're moving on. Just because we had the most exciting play in college football happen, that doesn't mean that there's not a lot of things that need fixing. Or the game would have never been like that. We wouldn't have been behind 30 to 27 had we done it right to start with. I'm a process person, all right? And the process that got us behind by three points in the game all right, is what I'm concerned about, okay? And I've been concerned about it. And I was up at 4.38 this morning concerned about it, not watching the play on ESPN because I could care less about it. All I know about the BCS ranking is if we lose this week, we won't be in them, all right? And I don't care about being in them or out of them or whatever, but I do care about winning the next game. And I think that's what we need to be focused on, all right? Because where we're ranked now is meaningless, absolutely meaningless. I had a little bit of a tough time in the locker room. We have a real good senior bunch that's really done a lot for this program in three years. Some great character people that have played a lot of good football here. Hardest bunch for me to let go. I've never come out of spring practice feeling great about our team. All right, there's always been some part of our team that was a concern coming out of spring practice. I mean, the year we won the championship, we couldn't get a pass off out there in the spring game, you know, because the offensive line was a big question mark. We didn't have a lot of depth. He says, Coach, he says, you're really making me nervous standing there watching me. <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, Donnie, what are you going to do in the game? I'm going to go to the games. <laughs> in every game but the Arkansas game, the quarterback that had the best efficiency, that's who won and lost the game. And the guy at Arkansas couldn't hit a bull in the ass with a handful of sand <laughs> until the last 30 seconds of the game. But they're an option team, so that really doesn't count. You know, I had a great minister tell me one time, very highly respected person, 
uh, in the clergy, talked about the fact, said to me, said to me personally, you know, the atmosphere that you create in Tiger Stadium and that you play in is closer to the kingdom of God than my church. I said, come on, you gotta be kidding. <laughs> he was serious for this reason and he's right. I see rich cheering with poor, black cheering with white, everyone playing together, competing together, hugging each other and embracing each other like I see nowhere else in our society. And that's the great thing about sports and that's the great thing about a great team game like football and Tiger Stadium. Coach Saban is not always available, but when he is available, he answers the questions very well and he doesn't duck questions. What Mississippi State thinks or what they're trying to do or you know, whether touchdown Jesus is coming to the game with them or any of that stuff doesn't really make any difference to me or to us or to our team. All right? And I don't want to spend one minute thinking about it, talking about it, because I don't know anything about it. All the members of the media have gotten their uh, good tongue lashing from Coach Saban. I mean, you all asking these questions like, we got problems at the University of Texas? I'm a little taken back by some of the questions you all are asking. You want to find a hole to crawl off into. I haven't been chewed out while I'm there. Nick, is, he knows football and he's straight up, and when you ask him a stupid question, he fires back a little bit. I will say this, I think he's uh, probably more comfortable than ever before, and I think he realizes nobody's out there to get him, they've got a job to do. I was told when I came here there was three things we were going to do. Improve the li living conditions for the players, which we have. Build an academic support center, which we have. And the last thing we were going to do is build a football facility for football. That's what the coach was told. So if it's important to have the coach here, then somebody ought to stand up and say, well, we better do it for the coach, because that's what he got told when he came here. And I've been here for three years, and I've been nice and patient about it all. I haven't ever said a word about that. And I'm not putting any pressure on the people to do it now. But it needs to be done. The PMAC needs it to get fixed, too. And we need a new baseball stadium, and we ought to have a new women's softball stadium. And when a vet wins 56 games, we shouldn't have to go to ULL and play instead of playing here because we don't have a good softball stadium. I, I, I don't get it. I guess everybody else is messed up and we're doing it right. I, I don't know. You going to put all this on TV? <laughs>